The Walker Cup final for 2023. A familiar venue, the National Stadium of Jamaica in Kingston. It's St. Andrew Technical versus Jamaica College. And what a story we have on our hands. The script writers perhaps could not have done it any better. Familiar foes, old rivals. Standout teams for the past six years. Jamaica College consistently getting the better of St. Andrew Technical. Can they now turn the tables or will it be more of the same for Jamaica College? Beautiful scenery. That's a shot of the title, the trophy on hand. Last year's winners, Timothy Gardens High. They were eliminated early. And the prognostics, prognosticators rather, had it that Jamaica College and St. Andrew Technical were the top two teams and they perhaps should have been in the Manning Cup final, but that is not the story. They now line up for another swan song in their storied past. This time in the Walker Cup final. 2023, what a schoolboy football season we've seen. It has been a tremendous season. Goals are plenty, action, drama. And yes, for 90 minutes, another heart-stopping, heart-pumping game of football in action. And it's yes, on your home of champions. St. Andrew Technical, they have smiles on their faces. There's a calm about them. But in the shadows, as you may only see the silhouette on your screen, 22 men will enter through that tunnel and do battle over 90 minutes. Ajitai Marshall, the number 10, he, on his birthday, scored in the Manning Cup, the Walker Cup, I beg your pardon, semi-final against Wilmers. What do we have on our hands today? Ubiquitous, ever present. The flagman for St. Andrew Technical High School has a flag, has a horn as well, and you'll hear a lot of that. Jamaica College, they, uh, the substitutes, they now make their way and uh, expecting a lot. National under 15 player there, Giovanni Taylor. He should come off the bench. And they have loads of quality Jamaica College. Old rivals. What goes on in the mind of the players? Are their nerves? Is there much reservation? What can they deliver? What will we see? Fervent Opus in campus. That's their coach, Davian Ferguson. He makes a solemn march as well as we get ready for kickoff a part of the Mount Pleasant coaching staff as well. Mount Pleasant Football Academy coaching staff would have won the season this year in the Jamaica Premier League. Can he add more silverware to what has already been a storied school board football a coaching career for him? What a moment. And Chris Taylor. Is on hand. And I'm Dean Smith. And we're expecting a great matchup in 2023. 
2023. Walker Cup final. The National Stadium. Speakers and all. Here's the anthem. And from the silhouette, we now see the flag bearers. We see the most important thing on hand, the ball, the match officials. They now make their march as well. And behind them, the players, many of whom would have dreamt of playing in front of the national stadium audience. And uh, this is being fulfilled before our very eyes. It's the Walker Cup final. They grow across the track, a track that has witnessed greatness, and they enter a field that has witnessed greatness for Jamaica. This was the venue that it was confirmed that Jamaica qualified for the 1998 World Cup. And now these players try to add to the story the many stories inside the National Stadium. It's a Walker Cup final. What a moment we have, Chris Taylor. Yeah, lovely moment. These teams have met so many times over recent years. Been arguably two of the strongest teams over the last decade. And even though stats really have nothing to show for it in terms of trophies, this yet another opportunity, another final for Philip Williams and his boys. Albeit not necessarily the final they would have wanted to be competing in, but it's still a trophy and one that they could finally lift. No trophy since 1987 for St. Andrew Technical. And in this competition, a, a trophy that has been pretty dry for Jamaica College, if you look at the entire duration of this competition, the three titles compared to over 30 in the Manning Cup. So it's a, it's a title that they've really struggled to attain, Jamaica College. And yeah, this promises to be a, another blockbuster with two very talented sides who fell short, but still, as you said, something big at stake something big at stake and uh, the one-up manship that i'm sure will stand as a predominant feature of this game stands tall because whichever team wins will have another will have a hand will have a say over the other team because they've faced each other so often the pleasantries are being done as the sponsors have their moment in the limelight greeting the players and officials of course Matthew Leiber there representing Sportsmax, a part of the pleasantries. What a moment for him. Yeah. Andre Three finals. These two have competed over the last five to six years. So it just shows the strength of, of these two units. The, the setup at the two schools, the, if you want to call it, the academy that they have. And yeah kudos to them as well somewhat amazing as well that stats have only come out on the winning side of things on one occasion some four years ago but the matches have always been close as we said three times they have not only have they gone to finals but what three or four times they have played in penalty shootouts to decide yeah. the encounter so it just shows how tight it is between the two schools over the time even though the navy blue has come out on top more on top more times than not here's the captain richard livingston he knows he must deliver a blockbuster performance to guide the team from Bumper Hall of Spanish Town Road to their first senior schoolboy football title since 1987. Of course, they would have won the under 16 competition two seasons ago. Here are the referees Tyron Robinson, Rick Tanacha, and Ricardo McKenzie, his assistants, the fourth official, Kelsa Anderson. They have the charge over this afternoon's encounter. Tyrone Robinson has been around for a while. Did take a break from officiating for a period as well. He was overseas as we see the stats start in 11. Jaheim Williams in goal. Alex Xavier Gooden, J. Lloyd Smith and Kemar Thompson, the back three. They have five in the middle of the park. At the base, Nicole Gale and Kalanji Watson. Also there, Richard Livingston. Dwayne Atkinson and Rashawn Frankson. Up top, we have uh, Andre Salmon and Leon Brown. They're coached by Philip Williams. Jamaica College, let's have a quick look at their starting lineup. Raul Renton in goal. Tariq Jones, Ravon Mills, Dylan John, Tahir Lawrence. 
Jaden Johnson, Brenton Sayers Jr., Dante Logan, Jamari Howell, Jamoy Dennis, Malachi Sterling. They're coached by Davian Ferguson. They line up as a 4 2 3 1. And the normal defensive player, Malachi Sterling, goes into the middle of the park as a central midfielder now. What impact they had. Uh, Renson Sayers, the captain. Vincentian from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Livingston, who many feel has somewhat played out of position throughout this season. I would actually like to see him more in, in a central role. He's the captain of St. Andrew Technical. He's been used as a flank player. I don't think he's a natural flank player, even though he's talented on both feet. But he doesn't really have the speed in, in the way that you would expect nowadays in the modern game of football, modern style of football. Agreed. The, one of the things that I see with him, though, why perhaps Philip Williams sees it fit to play him at the, in the flank is because he doesn't naturally go towards goal. Even in the Walker Cup semi-final, had an opportunity to really rifle a shot, went for the cross. It was a good cross. Nobody, nobody can take that from him. He definitely has a good delivery. But the attacking mindset, the goalward mindset that you think somebody in the middle of the park should have, I haven't seen that from him. Yeah, what I do think he has is, is vision and creativity. And I think that's, that somewhat was lacking when you looked at the semi-final performance of St. Andrew Technical or the quarter-finals performance. That was missing in terms of you know how they created their opportunities and i thought a person like him who passes with two feet and as i said can see the big picture would be better deployed there i mean how many opportunities did he really get to cross the ball as i said not a natural winger but stats blessed with talent and so to try and find a space for each player who philip williams wants in the starting lineup has been maybe difficult in itself it certainly has been let's see how they deliver st andrew technical jamaica college they will have the kickoff and Sayers punts it upfield trying to find Dylan John but it's Howell on the ball and now St. Andrew Technical trying to break forward Alex Xavier Gooden his pass misguided goes the way of John now for Jamaica College swings it to the right Dennis there Call goes in the favor of Jamaica College on that occasion. Opportunity for a great delivery early in the encounter for Jamaica College. Let's see how they deal with this one. Comes in the area. Let's go, but it's goes very high still not fully cleared but perhaps semi cleared now and that one perhaps went out of touch it did it's a throw now for St. Andrew Technical taken quickly and let's see what they can make of this here Livingston does get the throw in Taken quickly. Can he whip it in? Pulls it back. Goes to the line and tries to bring it across. Yeah, Cut out. Spoke about those talented deliveries. There's an example of that. Good skill as well. And many persons for St. Andrew Technical believe that had he been a part of the team uh, last season, of course, he would have not been there because of injury. Uh, Alex Xavier Gooden there being brought down made that J. Lloyd Smith being brought down there as Jamaica College tried to come forward had he been a, a part of the team last season they perhaps would have won that's all conjecture speculations but that history can't be rewritten can it long ball booted upfield salmon still giving some problems but Jamaica College able to come out of the danger and they come forward now Jane Johnson on the ball that's Philip Williams the head coach of St. Andrew Technical also teaches at the institution for 
close to 20 years now. Mechanical join. Let's see if he can drop a plan to finally get the upper hand in a final. And it really matters over Jamaica College. Easily played out by St. Andrew Technical. Malachi Sterling. Hasn't really settled either team just yet. Here's Logan on the ball. Gets it to John, but went all the way back to Tahir Lawrence and he finds his goalkeeper trying to get the control that Davian Ferguson loves to implement. That's certainly his co uh, coaching mantra, ensuring that there's control. That wasn't a bad control on that occasion, but Jamaica Connett still come away with the ball, though. Dennis to Johnson. And the channels that they're trying to play through, either team have effectively been blocked off by the opposing defenders. And this is really expected to be a chess match. That's Davian Ferguson, head coach of Jamaica College. Enviable title of winning. Header on! It's that man again! It's Leon Brown again! What a moment for St. Andrew Technical! In the fifth minute of play, Leon Brown rose highest, even though he's diminutive, and he beat Raul Renton all ends out. Can this be the turnaround for St. Andrew Technical? It really came high. And the first time delivery, Chris Taylor. What about that? Yeah, nice delivery into the area. And Brown, yeah, he wasn't properly marked either. Not the best defending from Jamaica College, but kudos to Brown as well, who headed it into the turf, which makes it even hard, made it even harder for Renton. It's the first goal JC have conceded in the Walker Cup this season. And that was a good finish. 17 on the season now for Leon Brown. And in major matches this season, you would say he has not come up trumps for this St. Andrew technical team. And obviously rectifying that very early here. In the quarterfinal against Haile Selassie, he scored both goals. And uh, that was a part of the reason they would have moved on to the semi-final and eventually the final. So, yeah, come, blooming, on. blooming late in the season. Yeah, well, I mean, as I said, 17 goals on the season. Did score quite a bit in the early rounds of the competition. But in the Manning Cup, in some critical games in that quarterfinal stage, where you would have looked, to see Leon Brown come to light, he got heavy criticism, just was out of the game totally. But yeah, good to see him find a pocket of space as he's down at the moment as well. The delivery from Frankson was magnificent, who also picked up his second assist of the season, Rashawn Frankson. But yeah, I think it was intelligent from Brown just to head it into the turf because it was still quite a distance from goal. Yeah, it was. And that helped to propel it past Renton. Alex Zeva Gooden had a strike of fury from this angle. That goes straight to the wall. In the quarterfinal matchup against Kingston College, they lost that match 1-0. You mean in the Manning Cup? In the Manning Cup, yeah. yeah. Here they come again, St. Andrew Technical broken up. Jade Johnson. And in that match against Kingston College, they enjoyed a lot of the possession. But the problem, the problem for them was that they weren't very creative. The passes were very lateral and back. No player trying something different. No player willing to take on defenders. 
and that was a part of, of St. Andrew Technical's game that I found disappointing, even though they're so talented. As, yeah, there's the challenge coming in. Leon Brown down again for St. Andrew Technical. In that game, as you mentioned, against Kingston College, I, I don't know why, but I just felt to speed up the game. And when you actually sped up the game, um, of course, on Sportsmax's YouTube channel, I, I went to times two in terms of speed. And when you saw the accuracy and the consistency in how they were playing St. Andrew Technical, you could see the repetition and how it's really drilled in them. But again, as you mentioned, to further your point, there was nothing creative about their play. It was just routine. And uh, having seen them all season at Kingston College, they were able to draft a plan that, you know, really stymied all the progress that they would have wanted to make. Yeah, well, Brown is back onto his feet, which is good to see from a stats perspective. Two times in quick succession. But yes, certainly agree with you, Dean. And as I said, if the routine is working, then fine. And against weaker teams in the first round of the competition, it will the work. routine will work because yeah. all these players are talented, especially going forward. Versatile attacking line in terms of goal scoring. Lots of scorers, lots of persons who have the ability to put the ball in the box against weak defensive opposition. But when you come up against a team that is very organized, sometimes you have to do something out of the book, out of Ab the ordinary. Absolutely. Change it up if it's not working, and that's what they couldn't do. Shaheem Williams there, equal to the task, ensuring that no danger came from that attacking play from Jamaica College. Here's St. Andrew Technical trying to go the other way. First touch, let him down. Howell was trying to switch the play but charged on and it fell to Gooden who took a few touches too many I believe apologizes getting the goal kick there Dylan John was on hand to cause some amount of problems Dylan John, the lateral run there. Malachi Sterling on the ball, gets it to Dante Logan. Evades the press easily. Here's Mills. Ball played forward there by Tariq Jones. Tilt. It's a goal kick again for St. Andrew Technical. McCoy Gale had a great game in the semi final. Gets it to Franks, and Franks' first touch let him down. Another player on the turf for St. Andrew Technical. It is Nikoi Gale. Back up now, able to, as we'd say, prover proverbially in Jamaica, run it off. It's a throw in for Jamaica College.
some rotation being deployed in the positioning for Jamaica College. Jamal Dennis coming over on the left flank, started on the right. Here's Logan, charged down effectively by Kalanji Watson. Gale, his pass cut out. Logan to Dennis. Gets it to Howell. Sterling on the ball, so easy on the ball. Jones switches it over to Logan. Trying to create space as Jamaica College is Dennis whipping it across. Headed out by St. Andrew Technical, but it goes to Tariq Jones. And they're happy to keep possession. Sayers tries to lift it in the area. Dennis is there being close marshaled by Xavier Good, but it's still with the Jamaica College. Logan to Dennis. Tahir Lawrence now. And they'll do this all afternoon, Jamaica College. Let's see the, if there's some killer instinct to the final action. Dennis on the ball. Jones showed just a shade too much of that one. Booted up field by St. Andrew Technical. Is a throw in for St. Andrew Technical, taken quickly. the final without the school drummers definitely keeping the vibe high and alive dangerous moments eventually played out out of touch though here's a throw in for St. Andrew Technical Frankson gets it in the area but headed out Sayers the captain. Well handled by Kemar Thompson. One of three central defenders for St. Andrew Technical. Of course, their system, three at the back, five in the middle of the park, and two forwards. Here's Jones, Mills. Captain Sears gets it to Mills, who finds the pink boots off Malachi Sterling. He's under pre pressure. They do manage to get it away. Here's Logan on the ball. Has seen quite a lot of the ball, has Dante Logan. That's certainly happy just to soak up all the pressure or the give as much time on the ball as Jamaica College would want. Good header out there for stats again. Jones gets it to John. Sarah's lifts it up.
solid defending so far from St. Andrew Technical as well. A very hot conditions here at the National Stadium. You just wonder as this match goes on, how that will take a toll, especially in terms of not only the legs, but in terms of concentration. Will we see more errors, which will create more goal-scoring opportunities? Well, Both teams if you are to wait the entire season have been pretty good defensively. You know, haven't conceded a lot of goals. As I said, in important matches, both teams falling short. St. Andrew Technical actually failing to score in two of their three quarter-final matches, which was a big surprise in the quarter-final round. But both with 3-0 wins to get here in the semi-finals. So from that perspective, very good. As I said, Jamaica College only conceding for the first time here in the final, in the Walker Cup. So. Of course, both these teams, because they fell out of the Manning Cup in the quarterfinal stage, they would have joined the Walker Cup in round two and not round one. Effectively, the quarterfinal round, yeah. But some may hear quarterfinal round and wonder where did we start? Did we start at a round of 128, <laughs> a round of 64? <laughs> yeah. So it's a water break. They're loving the vibe. Here's a look at the opening goal for St. Andrew Technical. Frankson got it on the right and flank, lifted in first time. And Leon Brown punching the air in triumph there as uh, he opened the account. 17 goals this season for the number nine. Yeah, excellent finish from him. 17 goals to go with six assists on a solid season for Leon Brown. Much improved from last year. Certainly in terms of his finishing has improved a lot, a lot more clinical. And as I said, for, for such a short player, good to see him finish so well with the head as well. Granted, he wasn't under any pressure, but still with a quick thought, needed to look up, realize where the goalkeeper was, his distance, and what he had to do to beat him. And he did it well. The lead, a good sign for St. Andrew Technical. The one time they beat JC, which was in 2019, is the only time they have led since 2017. So since 2017, they've always had to work from behind. This is the first time, well, this is the second time they have led. The first time, it was a victory. So let's see if history follows them today. So Brenton. Putting himself under some pressure there. Undue pressure, if you ask me. Getting a firm talk into from the JC defensive line as well. Tyron Robinson ensuring that the player taking the throw in doesn't steal. Too many yards. Here's Logan on the ball. Threads it through for Jaden Johnson. Get the return ball from him. Go central to Jabari Howell. Has space to dribble. But yeah, stats. Having the numbers in the midfield here, they come the other way now. Salmon tries to spread it across. Atkins was there trying to lift it in the area, but was charged down. Here they are in possession. Jamaica College being equal to the task there.
throwing for Jamaican College, taken quickly. Can they make something of this? Two defenders surrounding him, he gets around. Got the shot off, but it was charged down. They play forward now. And can they go the other way? Here's Leon Brown. Draws two defenders with him. Trying to get it across. Does evade two of them. Gets around, but... Jamaica College able to clear. And... Dennis there drawing the foul as well. Quite a few nibbles there, eh? <laughs> Nothing major. And maybe that's what referee Tyrone Robinson thought as well. Upfield for Brown. Kudos to Brown, though, for trying to stay on his feet and work his way. Here's Howell for Jamaica College. To Logan. Mills. Sterling. His pass was overcooked. Goes out of touch. Twenty-five minutes gone in this encounter. National on the 17th player, Alex Xavier Gooden. Boots it forward. Actually captained the team last year on some occasions. Here they come forward now. Sterling to Johnson. Firm challenge on that occasion. And they make no apologies about it either. Good himself in the area, strong challenge. Had to make sure that he timed it very well. Could have given away a penalty here, you see it. Johnson getting away, well timed by Good. Made sure just as the ball got away from Johnson that he made a tackle at that point. Sometimes defenders hesitate at that point when they see the ball going away, wait a little, and then by the time they put in their foot, the ball has gone ahead and they end up taking down the player. So, spectators on hand inside the National Stadium, getting in on the action. Quite a few from Jamaica College so far, of course. The Manning Cup final comes up after this. Another team in blue, in the form of Heidel versus Mona. Cream and red. So, red will definitely be here all, up, all evening, as well as blue. The only thing left is purple, the combination color. Yeah. Mm. You just had to put in the purple, didn't you? What are you trying to get at, oh, Chris Taylor? At all. I'm not sure if you're trying to complete the spectrum. Yeah. Glidoscopic. Anyhow, what is sure is that it will be a first time winner in the Manning Cup, whoever comes out on top. Stats, if they win here, it will be the first time ever for them. And Jamaica College will be the first time since 2017. Only three times in their long storied history have they ever won this competition. Here comes Stats. They tried to get that one across. Hasn't been really cleared. They still have possession. Here's Frankson. Can't shoot from that angle. Did try the shot. Here they come again. Looks to be Atkinson on the ball, but touch too many there. And Jamaica College able to push forward now. Here's Frankson. Frankson two going down.
player for Jaden Johnson still feeling the, the effects perhaps of that earlier challenge. Jane Johnson still being treated. Still feeling the effects from that challenge. It's a really strong challenge from Gooden, the cap good former captain. Giovanni Taylor there being sent to get ready. If Jaden Johnson is unable to continue, he another player there warming up. It would be unfortunate for Jamaica College to lose Johnson. Is that kind of player who scores in important matches, turns up when he's needed. If you look at most of the critical matches, Johnson has been on the score sheet. Second highest in the scoring chart for Jamaica College with 12. Dylan John leads with 15 here. The cross comes over. Played away and the stats still in possession. Throw in. Gale is trying to get it across, but charged down. They're wasted by St. Andrew Technical straight to a Jamaica College player. They get a foul going the other way as well. Here's Jones. Dennis. You know, the channels have been clogged effectively by St. Andrew Technical. Player for JC is down. Yeah, it is Johnson. And perhaps that's the end of his campaign in the Walker Cup final. Perhaps. Let's see. Stretcher has come out. Wow. Big moment is really unfortunate for Johnson. You can see the grimace on his face, but it will be a chance, an opportunity. A young Giovanni Taylor, eight goals and seven assists on the season there, number 10. And he'll probably be called off, come off the bench. A little bit early, although it seems that it might be Garrick actually, and not Taylor. So it is Garrick who is going to make the appearance, Thierry Garrick. One goal and three assists on the season. Thought it might have been Taylor, but he did play in the Colts or under 16 match. Was it the semi-final yesterday? So, so, yeah, it might be taking a toll. Maybe not as fresh as they would want him. Yeah. Especially for a physical encounter with the towering defense of uh, St. Andrew Technical. Uh, JC actually won that semi-final under-16 encounter ahead of Calabar. So it was worth it then? Yes, it was. Here's Nikoi Gale for St. Andrew Technical. His pass was hindered and uh, Andre Sound was unable to get a hold of it. Jamaica College tried to push forward the other way. It's 
So you're saying, yes, well worth it from a Taylor perspective because Jamaica College ended up winning that semi final. Here they come final. again. Good save. Garrick. Immediate impact. Yeah, first moment for him in the match. Not the cleanest strike with the left foot, but I think that actually worked in his favor. Made it difficult. Not sure it was sneaking in though. Might have just hit the upright. Here's the corner kick. It's it in the area. Jamaica College unable to get ahead to it. But they'll map up at the back now. And you'll see a lot of this from Raul Renton. Yeah. That's a part of how Davian Ferguson likes even his goalkeepers to be a part of the action, giving him an extra man to keep that control. That's the mantra, as I mentioned earlier. 2009, 2010, 2017. The three times that Jamaica College have won the Walker Cup. And in fact, in 2017, that's the last time that all Manning Cup teams were able to compete in the Walker Cup. Of course, they changed the format after that year. Much to the dismay of Jamaica College, who felt they should have gotten an opportunity to defend their title. Issa deciding to change the format for to give more teams an, an opportunity. And also to lessen the workload of the teams who had to be playing in four, comp well, possibly four competitions, especially those who made it to the final. With the advent of the Champions Cup, the, yeah. which, was, which is a knockout in itself. So, yeah, there was much debate over that, but it has remained, it initially started with what was it 12 eight teams then went to 12 and yes it's, it's been tweaked over over the years i i actually like the the, the format that they have no dean i, I think yeah. Good thought process from the ISA executive. And yeah, how it is now is that the, the teams that fall out at the round of 16 play the first round of the Walker Cup. And then the, the losers in the quarterfinal round then join them for the second round. And yeah, second round being the quarterfinal stage. And then we go from there. A bit more creative thinking. He says with the free kick after that challenge from Gooden on Theory Garrick. What can we see from the captain in terms of his delivery? Gets it in the area. Jaheim Williams is happy to guide it out. Not the best from Sears, who is usually good from the dead ball scenarios. That one a bit too deep in terms of the delivery. And Williams, as I said, a shadow in it out of play. Can't say I'm, I've been impressed with the passing accuracy of either team on the afternoon. I was just about to say that if the game continued with this level of pace and intensity, I think St. Andrew Technical would be pretty happy. I don't think JC have been very innovative in their play. They haven't really changed it up. Make incisive diagonal runs, even if they're not getting the ball, just to pull just to pull the defenders out of position. So it's been pretty easy for Gooden and company. Sterling was trying to get that forward, but again, cut out by St. Andrew Technical. And even though on paper, St. Andrew Technical have said they're playing a 3-5-2 formation, I think for the most part, it's really four at the back because Frankson does sit quite a bit the number 14, even though he likes to get forward. 
So for the moment, especially since they got the goal, it's really been a four-man back line. Here's Dennis for JC. Gets it across. Kemar Thompson was trying to, well, has managed to play it forward. Here's Salmon. Atkinson to the captain. Was wondering how I haven't heard from him all afternoon. Livingston stands still in possession. And Salmon there able to really bring it under his spell. Here they come again. Could this be a moment? Salmon has spread it wide. What a moment for St. Andrew Technical and Andre Salmon. Didn't he fluff his lines there? Good first touch from Salmon. But yeah, just didn't keep his composure there. And was looking to hit it with the outside of the right boot, which is a difficult technique, but probably the right one to get it around the keeper. But it didn't come off the outside of the boot. Instead, it came off somewhere around the instep or the toe and hence went wide. But yeah. Sometimes wasteful salmon. And even though he scored, what, some nine goals this season? Probably should have been in double digits by now based on the amount of chances he's got in the season. I remember the Walker Cup semi-final had quite a few lookings. He just couldn't convert, but I hope you're converted. You need to download the Sportsmax app today, get it on the Google Play or the Apple App Store, and watch all the action. The different sporting offerings from Sportsmax, schoolboy football, La Liga, and so much more. You definitely need to get the Sportsmax app. Gail. Jones was trying to stab it forward, but yeah, the game hasn't really lived up to the billing in the opening 41 minutes. Which this comp competition, when it was just remodeled in 2018, did suffer from the, a lack of intensity because a lot of teams were just disappointed that they hadn't made it through to the Manning Cup. But I think since they have made some further adjustments, it's, it's given more enthusiasm, more support. And then, as you said, with these two teams playing, you just expect a, a blockbuster because they've been so close over the last five to six years. Not much to separate them. And most times, the odd goal or a penalty shootout, which is exactly what we're faced with here. Here's Jamaica Conley trying to keep possession, play it around. But again, good defensive organization from St. Andrew Technical. Can they make something of this one now? Trying to get by two. Does manage to get, get it across now, but it's headed away. And played out further. But Nikoi Gale is there. Still has possession. Gale was queuing up the shot but went against that choice and yeah Salmon now his pass very poor in the end good defensive work that from J. Lloyd Smith as you can see when they're coming across the 18 yard area which was a complaint they're too lateral with their passing Intangible technical. What about a couple of forwards, Leon Brown or so, making that diagonal run, carrying a defender? He doesn't have to receive the ball, but at least create an opportunity for a defense splitting pass. I just find that they're easily read 
because their passes are just coming on a straight line basically across that 18 yard area so unless there's a gap there there's nothing doing clear down for St. Andrew Technical looks to be could be the yeah, could be. Yeah, it is the captain, Richard Livingston. Again, not involved enough for my liking. Good when the ball comes to his feet out wide. But I think he needs to be one of those that are a deciding factor in the play. Yeah. And hence why I, I, I get your point that he is good from delivering from wide. But because he's not because he's so influential. I would like to see him in the spine. He's, as I said, not an out-and-out -out winger by any means, with his pace, running ability, or how he takes on players to the line. But how he impacts the game, I think, through the spine with his two-footed ability, some of what we want to see from St. Andrew Technical, he could create. Yes, he doesn't score well. We say he doesn't score many, but he scored, what, 10 on the season? So he still does score. I would just like to see him in, in that kind of role. He's up on his feet now, Richard Livingston. That's a shot of Froome Technical. They'll be playing the Ben Francis Cup knockout final tomorrow against McGraw. Clayton Stevens, the coach there in the blue hat to blue the cap. far right of your yeah. cap, yeah. But here, Jamaica College trying to come forward, but Again, St. Andrew Technical, they have really defended well. Albeit Jamaica College haven't really been incisive in front in the final third either. Here they come again. Again, that was cut out. Here's Mills. Sayers. That was well read. And J. Lloyd Smith. His pass. A lot of Again, persons four. might not have known, but that same from team he looked at well a school actually did lift that title some 17 years ago in 2006. Here's Garrick on the ball for Jamaica College in the area. Forced wide. Only time they've ever won the Ben Francis to go with their one the Costa Cup title as well from Technical. McGrath, well, this is a chance for their first senior silverware. Never done it before. Here's Jones trying to get it across. And where were the blue shirts attacking the back post? Just not there. Have to commit more players forward in sensible areas, Jamaica College. We're in the final minute of three, added on. Dante Logan with that attempt there. Tyrone Robinson has seen enough of the first half of the Walker Cup final for 2023. A lone goal from that man. Leon Brown sees St. Andrew Technical go into the halftime break with a 1-0 lead. Jamaica College were shell-shocked. Of course, that goal came in the fifth minute of play. And Davian Ferguson and company, they'll have a lot to discuss in the halftime break. He'll have a lot to talk about as well. Will it be a final crowning moment for him? For them? Well, so much more. We will see.
Here for Champions League is on Sportsmax 2 this Tuesday. PSV versus Arsenal, 12.45 in Jamaica, 1.45 in the Eastern Caribbean. And it's really a Champions League week. Inter, Real Sociedad, Tuesday, 3 p.m., 4 in the Eastern Caribbean. Union Berlin, Real Madrid, 3 p.m., 4 in the Eastern Caribbean. Then on Wednesday, on Sportsmax 2, the UEFA Champions League, RB Leipzig versus Young Boys. 12.45, 1.45 in the Eastern Caribbean. Dortmund versus PSG, 3 p.m., 4 in the Eastern Caribbean. Royal Antwerp versus Barcelona, Wednesday, 3 p.m., 4 in the Eastern Caribbean as well. We're back at the National Stadium. St. Andrew Technical leads Jamaica College 1-0 after the first half in the Issa Walker Cup final for 2023. Some of the players for Jamaica College, Derek Jones and Dylan John. Jamoy Dennis also re-engaging his feet for what is expected to be another 45 minute of tactical and the physical battles. Richard Livingston, captain, as well as a few of his charges. Kalanji Watson there and Kemar Thompson in your shot. And yeah, uh, that's the Walker Cup. Second of action now. St. Andrew Technical with the kickoff. Nikoi Gale getting things going there. Kemar Thompson on the ball trying to push it forward for the target man, Leon Brown. Frankson trying to switch it to Livingston. Through here, and Renton was alert to the danger. Will we see an energetic 45 minutes? Well, we need to. It's been disappointing so far. Here's Jamaica College with the shot. Over the top. For Dylan John as well. They are leading goal scorer. Kind of position that he usually lets you makes you pay. Unusual space created here. And if you think about it, that was a really good chance. Should have done better with the finish. Technically good on the ball, good kick off the ball, but just didn't get it right on that occasion. 15 goals and four assists for JC's number seven. Only once this entire season has Jamaica College failed to score. And it was against Heidel in the quarterfinals, a 1-0 loss. So they have found a way on most occasions. 
Can they find a way back in this one? Or can St. Andrew Technical push it beyond reach and recovery? Here's Sterling. Has been a revelation in the middle of the park, Malachi Sterling. Fact in their 14 encounters over the last decade, only once has JC failed to score in 2018. Get a foul, free kick in a dangerous position. Thierry Garrick there, his movement have definitely unsettled the St. Andrew technical defense. J. Lloyd Smith there with that lunge took him out. Could be dangerous. He made this about what? Maybe some 23 yards out. Yeah. And if you had out your measuring tape. Sterling with the left foot or Sears with the right? The angle could go for any because it's pretty central. It is. I think it might be Sterling. It will be. It's over the top. Decided to go the, the side up where the wall was defending the Sterling. Had to open up his body. Difficult to somewhat generate the pace from there, but yeah, well over in the end. This is flat in terms of their attack. And you think teams like these with, with, with so many goal scorers to only have two attempts on target in the entire 45 minutes, one each, it was, it was really poor in terms of attacking play. Get a throw in there through Sterling. Lose possession though. Leon Brown doing well to turn. Here comes St. Andrew Technical. That's Atkinson. Gets it to Brown. Three defenders around him. He find an outlet there. Here's John. And you spoke about the passing. Just look at passing from both these teams. Really poor, below standard. Giving away the ball needlessly. Not sure what John was trying to achieve on that occasion. And let's not count out the heat as well. It is extremely hot here at the National Stadium. Gail to Frankson. Frankson stabs it forward. Salmon trying to get it across now. Atkinson with the ball at his feet. Gail over to Livingston. Livingston going to the line to get it across. Renton didn't get it cleanly, but they still managed to clear. And they stab it forward, but J. Lloyd Smith able to play it out. I haven't seen much from this man as well. Uh, Dennis loves to get down on that right-hand side with a lots of pace, bustling kind of player. Yeah. Takes on defenders, but we haven't seen any of those runs. As I said, it's, it's been a, a placid attacking display from Jamaica College. And solid defense from St. Andrew Technical. Well, the fans love that one. Can Salmon deliver something well? Good defensive work from Jamaica College. And they come away now. Dennis trying to get it under his spell. Gets by Thompson, releases the ball, and Thierry Garrick is almost through there. He saw the ever-present. Well, he was forced to play a little bit wide. Let's look at this piece of skill here. Atkinson through the legs. Mm, that was nice. Howell, the recipient. Caesar Salad. <laughs> Didn't have the dressing to go with it, though. Mm. 
surprising the call goes against St. Andrew Technical on that occasion from referee Robinson. Kyle Butler on hand as a team that he was a part of the coaching staff last season will play against Heidel in the Manning Cup final. We speak of Mona and his father coincidentally is the technical director at Mona and the marketing juggernaut has coined Mona pride will it be the pride of Mona or the high flying soaring on the wings of excellence of Heidel but back to this one the Walker Cup final Jamaica College Shaheem Williams easily handled handles that one Good work from Atkinson. They still have the ball somehow. St. Andrew Technical. The counter press of Jamaica College has been solid to regain possession, but here comes Kalonji Watson. Showed just too much of that. to Howell Dylan John back to Mills Dennis stripped of possession on that occasion Frankson tries to release it but to hear Lawrence on hand he goes all the way to Ronald Renton, who doesn't mind having the ball at his feet, though sometimes he has attracted some amount of pressure. Ferguson to the left of your screen coach Watson formerly of Kingston College now an assistant at Jamaica College fifty six minute of this encounter that's the leading goal to nil. Jones is kicking on that occasion. It's really been emblematic of the afternoon that we've seen. trying to keep it alive here's Jamaica College coming forward gets it across the Sterling his first touch wasn't good and that one was even worse but Logan does well gets it to Sterling almost getting the return ball and the referee points to the spot. Yep. And, and there is hope for Jamaica College. Malachi Sterling 
the player to watch. Nice overlapping run from Sterling. Likes to drive forward. Favors the left foot. Started the attack. And a nice one towards that. Dennis, he was playing it with it. Looks so. Instinctive pass from Dennis. Well weighted. And yeah. Committing early was good. And on this occasion, he didn't time that challenge well. <laughs> An excellent one in the first half, which resulted in the fourth substitution of Jaden Johnson. But yeah. On this occasion, I think he went to ground a little too early. Did good. Maybe he should have looked to use the body instead because Sterling being a left footer, it was obvious he couldn't kick it with his left foot on the first occasion. So he was looking to take an extra touch with the right, yeah. which would have given Gooden a bit of time. Anyhow, Sears. The captain for Jamaica College versus Jaheim Williams. Can he come big? Save the penalty in the quarterfinal encounter against Mona. Can he do so again? Or will Sears convert? Sears converts. Yeah, just. Well, that certainly wasn't the cleanest strike. Hesitated, trying to throw off Jaheim Williams. And he probably threw himself off. And luckily for him, it went under the body of Williams. Just look at it here. And then he scuffed that so badly. Oh, Williams should have saved that. Yeah, really Williams, should have. Yeah, Williams' palms are in the wrong position. Just look at him. The palms too high. Instead of being along the ground, just look at his hands here. Instead of getting that right hand down, it was high and it went under his hands. Maybe the lack of pace was almost helping Sears in the end, but it all works out in the end. It all, they all count. And JC, as we said, who always seemed to find a way, score again in this competition. Well, the competition is alive again. And Malachi Sterling being treated by the medical staff of Jamaica College. What will we see for the remaining 30 minutes plus any time that will be added on? Will there be a winner in normal time? What can we find for the rest of this encounter? Here's Garrick. J. Lloyd Smith there bringing him down. Play through. And his first touch really let him down on that occasion. Yeah, the St. Andrew Technical Defense, they fell asleep on that occasion. Garrick, as he's done all afternoon, causing problems. Here's Sterling getting the return ball now. Has been influential, has Sterling. And yeah, designated the player to watch. And we're still watching him with on the ball. Can this be broken up? No, it can't. Sayers back to Sterling. Kemar Thompson did well to shield that one out. Gets the throw in. So, St. Andrew Technical getting ready to make some substitutions. Which, for one, Dwayne Atkinson will leave the field of play. Next to be Ajitai Marshall, number 10, will come on in his stead. Also leaving his... Andre Salmon, number 11. And uh, number 19, Jamal Bygrave. Yeah, yeah. 
attacking minded changes being made. that the St. Andrew technical supporters did in great spirits even though they just conceded. You can see the grand the shadow of the grandstand now taking over the field. More than half of it covered which will cool down conditions quite a bit. We were saying earlier that we thought the heat would certainly play its part as well as the game went on. Not only the legs, but just the concentration side of things. Download the Sportsmax app today, get it on the Google Play or the App Lap Store, and watch so many different channels with sporting content to suit your own fancy. So tennis is there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, tennis for sure. The WTA, cricket as well. Lots of cricket going on around the world. La Liga, as you can say, well, there's many different aspects to the football. There is high school football from Trinidad. There is the Premier League in Trinidad as well. Jamaica Premier League. As we see, yeah. Mona there with Craig Butler and company. Coming up in the Manning Cup final next against Heidel. It will be the first opportunity. Well, whoever wins that, it will be the first time they have that trophy in their cabinet first trophy at the senior level Heidel have been to a final before couldn't get it done against St George's Mona first time Mona have been around for some time actually Heidel persons might be saying but we did win the Walker Cup which is true in 2018 the first year that the format was changed the year after JC won in 2017, the last time they won the title. So yeah, I'd, uh, I guess you'd say do have a trophy at the senior level with the Walker Cup. But looking for their first Manning Cup title. Mona haven't won any. History beckons for either of those two teams. Yeah. And this tenure under Craig Butler is the first time you can really say that Mona have managed to retain players and, and really build a, a, a system. Even though Mona has produced talent over the years, they've always left to go to schools with, a, with much better academies, much better systems, much better opportunities. So Craig Butler's arrival to the school has really helped them to go from strength to strength in terms of keeping their talent and then adding more. Lots of players in this team were there last season, some even there this season before, so great to see. It's what, his third year in, in charge. Yeah. Levinstan with the delivery, gets it in the area. Not fully cleared, Gooden. I wasn't really able to connect. I was surprised there wasn't a whistle on the play. It seemed like a very high foot from one of the St. Andrew technical forwards. If this game does go to the penalty shootout, who do you fancy? Historically, JC. Jamaica College, they've never lost one against that. So. Yeah. Yeah. It and let's just be said, we haven't seen the most impressive shootouts between these two teams either. <laughs> but JC have got the job done. Still some minutes left to play. Here's Livingston. Gets by one. Gets the delivery across. No one was there in a yellow shirt. 
if you do remember last season's penalty shootout, though it was a nail biter, went deep into what, into sudden death in terms of penalty kicks. Jamaica College again winning, I think it was 8-7. This one is through for stats. Trying to get through, trying to get the shot off. Gets a deflection. It's Great a corner skill. kick. Yeah. yeah. Great skill there. Another Caesar salad coming in. And it's good to see that they're looking to express themselves a bit more St. Andrew Technical. This was one of the things that I thought was missing in their quarterfinal setup. One on one situations, not, not just not willing to take on defenders. They're doing a little bit more of that. And they're advancing their play more, I think. Here's the delivery once more. And it's go up, but set it over the top. Yeah, real opportunity there. And Gooden, as he's done all season, always a threat in the area from corner kicks. Already had three goals this season. Just Gooden. Maybe might be disappointed that he didn't add a fourth. Here they come, St. Andrew Technical. Still alive. Livingston, as he often does, tries to go to the byline. Plays it out of touch. Offers the apology afterwards. Still in possession is St. Andrew Technical. Kalanji Watson. Delivery from Frankson was a good one. He went straight to goal on that occasion. Still alive for them. By Grip trying to get the shot off. Still not cleared. Nick Hoy Gale gets it back to Livingston. He swings it in. And Jamaica College finally get to boot it forward. And that wasn't a good first touch. And now Jamaica College on the offensive. And J. Lloyd Smith, he left nothing to the imagination there. Poor touch from Garrick. That too. Yeah, Dylan John picked it up well, created a space and freed him. But he just didn't have a good relationship with the ball, did Garrick? Very unlike his first name, who was very good in those kind of runaway situations with his pace. That being the French theory. theory. Clear down for Jamaica Connors, the goalkeeper, Ron Renton. Referee heads over to that area just to ensure he's all right. Or to ensure that he gets the treatment he needs. To throw in for St. Andrew Technical. 72nd minute of play. Sterling on the ball for Jamaica College. Loses possession. Push forward. And there's a foot race now. Had to be cleared by Jones. Dante Logan snaps it forward. J. Lloyd Smith wasn't really aware where the ball was a while ago. does get the call and they live to reorganize it 
Let's see how they do now. Smith. Poor first touch from Marshall. Goes long again, trying to get by Grave in the game. Smith has been rather aggressive in his play. Falls to the ground there. He really barged into theory, Garrick. All the worse for it. to talk into and has gotten a talk into from the referee it's a free kick for Jamaica College could be 30 yards out captain Sayers goes to the goal it's off the frame Not a bad strike at all from Sayers. It was definitely going to go on the underside of the crossbar. And that crucial touch from Jaheim Williams saw it over. Sterling now with the corner kick. Gets it in the area. Another corner kick. Will go the way of Jamaica College. Three corners for Jamaica College, only one for St. Andrew Technical. Sayers standing behind this one, gets it in the area. Marshall trying to clear, but goes the way of Dennis. Clear down for Jamaica College. Looks to be Sterling. Would fall there. Such a versatile player, Malachi Sterling. We've seen him at wing back. We've seen him playing a, a central defensive role. Now playing central midfield. Talented player and basically responsible for earning Jamaica College the penalty as well, which got them all square. Attended Woolmers initially, as you said earlier, in, in schoolboy life, Malachi Sterling. Before this season now with, with JC. Nicole Gill. Poor pass there and a foul committed by Marshall. Under a quarter of an hour left in this one, Chris Taylor. Yeah, I don't think it's enough time. <laughs> I just have a feeling this is going further. As seems to be the norm with these two. Jaime Williams easily handles that one.
Here's Dennis. Of course, do remember, if they are all square after 90 minutes, there's no extra time. So it's straight to penalties. Livingston gets it to Frankson. Dennis now can carry forward as well as Sterling for Jamaica College. Yeah, well read by Gooden. Yeah. Livingston gets it in. Almost there. Livingston once more. And I'm sure even though Jamaica College have had a great record against stats in terms of penalty shootouts, they'd love to win this in regulation time. I'm not a big fan of straight penalties, but it is what it is. I think with the amount of football the youngsters are playing, you know, it's have made a decision not to necessarily extend it further, but I just think penalty shootouts should always be a last resort because it's such a, such a lottery. I always rather a bit of extra time even if it is reduced but none of that this year more changes for philip williams even the knee brace has the colors nowadays dean style uh. so kalanji watson leaves for delani white Or Delaney. They do say pronunciation varies. <laughs> Kevin Hall <laughs> replacing Leon Brown, the scorer. Kalunji exits stage left. Can they rise to the occasion without him? Livingston. Here's Logan. Dennis unable to get on the end of that one. And yeah, only 10 minutes left in the normal time. What's on his mind? Maybe, oh no, not another penalty shootout. What's on his mind? Perhaps my arms are tired. <laughs> Has been waving all afternoon. Jaheim Williams again requiring treatment. Was a part of the penalty shootout in goal for St. Andrew Technical last year what's on his mind here's the sports act sports back that moment brought to you by the sports back app wonderful delivery from frankson in the path of leon brown whose header opened the account on the afternoon beautiful play in the fifth minute of the encounter his 17th goal for the season The Sportsmax app moment brought to you by the Sportsmax app has since been substituted. I learned this term from you, Argy Bargy. Here's Jamaica College. Dylan John 
trying his trickery, gets it across. Didn't get it under control, though the, the, the attacking player for Jamaica College. Here's Derek Jones to his captain Sayers, lifts it. Chan gets it under his spell now. Call goes against Alex Xavier Gooden. Taken quickly. Dennis. Yeah, good words coming in from Gooden there. You could just hear him saying to Williams, relax, relax, relax. In other words, no one attacking the back post. Don't force yourself to try and catch it and then give away a corner. So that was impressive from the former under 17 captain, national captain in Gooden. Jamaica College making a substitution. The 84th minute of the encounter. Jamal Dennis. We had expected Taylor earlier. He's now going to be shown in the fans in the stands. Wanted to see Giovanni Taylor as well. As I said, he played in the under-16 semi-final yesterday. A winning encounter for Jamaica College. They are now into the final of that competition. They'll play Woolmers. Yeah. Who made it to two junior football finals. The on the 14 as well. Mm. Good signs for them in, in, in the years to come, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. From their perspective. It was Wilmers. That's in Tanger Technical beat in the semi-finals of the Walker Cup. 3-0 was the end result. Coached by Jerome Waite. Their senior team, though, does not not ready yet in terms of challenging for a, a, a Manning Cup title. Bit inexperienced, young. But yeah, as you said, the under 14 and under 16 teams doing well, so let's see. Under 14 team beat Kingston College 1 0. Here comes Jamaica College. Wrist was on the play there. They beat a Kingston College team that had Kelvin Brown, who actually played in the Manning Cup early in the season, as one of the top goals, and had scored 37 goals at the under-14 level. They marked him out. Here's St. Andrew Technical, as they should. It's the second time they were beating Kingston College, Wilmers. They are coached by a Kingston College old boy. <laughs> well, Taylor will be playing in that final of the under 16, and he would love to find something in the remaining moments here to save his team having to go to penalties. down one of two players who came across from York Castle and a part of the Mount Pleasant Academy. Hmm. With other way of penalties? Is that what we're destined to see? Well, we have just about four minutes in normal time. The shot a shot a couple of moments ago of Paul Steer. Experienced cameraman with phase three is actually a St. Andrew technical old boy. Looks like he's concentrating a lot in the stands. <laughs> Not sure which way it's going to go. I think most of his life he's been waiting to see Stats lift another trophy at the senior level. Yeah, 
Williams puts it forward. Got a touch on the way out, taken quickly by Hall. Still in possession. Delaney White. His cross was poor. Here's Dylan John now going the other way for Jamaica College. Does a step over. Gets by one. Nicole Gale recovers well. Goes away of Frankson. Comes inside. Here's Delaney White. Kevin Hall now on the ball. Gale. And of course the lateral passes that you mentioned being deployed all over again until ultimately it was broken up. Here's Gale playing the advantage, the referee. Poor pass. And the advantage has been lost. Here's Taylor. Still running. But to make a college happy to reset it at the back now. They turn it forward. Sterling John Mills much time to find a winner for these two teams it will be straight penalties no extra time involved penalties something that both these two are very used to against each other four in the last few years JC winning all six years and five seasons John, get in by Frankson, draws him down, it's a bit of cynicism. Not quite yet, says Frankson, could have seen a yellow card for that. Seven minutes of added time. He's snacking on something. Here the header comes, but ultimately goes outside. Good defending by Smith. Will be a corner. He's certainly looking more lively in the dying stages. Dylan John coming alive, Sterling as well, making his presence felt. Delivers the corner kick in the dangerous area. Not cleared yet. The shot off the upright. Oh, what a moment for Jamaica College. It was Taylor, wasn't it? Or, or was it Sears? Probably was the captain, you know, Rinson Sears. It was. He was beaten, was Williams. Now he can smile. Good delivery by Sterling. I thought the header should have been better from Sears there, but he made up for it with this strike. Wow. A couple of centimeters away. Here it was. And that was good technique, you know. Yeah. Difficult technique. But he executed well. seen some of those acrobatic finishes in the higher leagues overseas in recent times news travels fast mm. here they come again threaded through for sterling flashing across the face of goal 
yeah, John was a little bit late in terms of attacking the area, so I don't think Sterling would have picked him up in his wing mirrors. Taylor was also at the edge of the box, but you can't too blame him for going for goal there, even though the angle was difficult. Although the substitute, Giovanni Taylor, is in good form, scored in that 3-1 win against Calabar in the under-16 semi-final we were talking about. And you wonder if these changes are, are strictly for penalties at this stage. So two players coming on. For St. Andrew Technical, number 16 and number 3, Marvin Taylor and Damian Blackburn. We'll see how that pans out. I've never been a fan of just bringing on players to kick penalties, especially at this stage where they haven't been able to warm into the game. And we've seen over the years, especially at this level, where that has resulted in major misses and some notable ones as well. I must say, Philip Williams and St. Andrew Technical have a bad reputation when it comes to that, but anyhow. Throw and take in, Marshall to Hall. Space for Nicoy Gale. Good. by St. Andrew Technical once more. Logan puts it upfield. By Gail there. Here's Marshall. Can he marshal the troops? Did get a deflection. Should be a corner kick it is. Two minutes left of the seven. Barry Carrick is down for Jamaica College, gets to his feet now. Stop spectators getting focused. This is their chance. Can it be a magical moment? Can it be an uppercut? Left it in the area. Handled the ball. Did good at the back post. And the Jamaica College making a change. Goalkeeper going down. give an opportunity for his opposite number Jason Charles to enter the field of play other changes being made as well and obviously Jamaica College they really don't mind the penalty kicks yeah quite a few changes being made as well so obviously these are for penalties we will note these names for sure. That's number three. Zinedine McLean. Yeah, McLean coming on. And so too is Barrett. Ronaldo. Two penalty shootouts last season. One in the Champions Cup semi-finals. One in the Manning Cup final. 8-7 in the Manning Cup final. That one was actually a pretty good shootout. Good quality kicks. Went into sudden death. 
and 5-4 was the Champions Cup semi-final win for JC. Two out of three matches they played last season went the distance. JC won 5-4 on penalties in 2019 in the final as well. And in the final of 2017, 5-4 as well. Can Stats finally break the jinx? We're in time out of two at a time. Jamaica College having a free kick. In good territory for delivery. You really need a blaster from that distance to beat Jaheim Williams. I think this will be a delivery to the penalty spot, which would probably make more sense and allow all players to attack it. I'm surprised they haven't committed more forward. This is the last chance. Header was flicked on. And the Tyron Robinson has seen enough of this Walker Cup final. Jamaica College and the St. Andrew Technical in a familiar story. A tie at the end of regulation time. And it will be decided by the dreaded penalty kicks. The lottery's out. Who will win the jackpot? Confirmation of the full time score. St. Andrew Technical 1, Jamaica College 1. Full time highlights now. Things got going early for St. Andrew Technical. Ball lifted by Frankson. Leon Brown headed it down and in his 17th of the season. Once more, look on the delivery from Rashawn Frankson, and he was unmarked. Leon Brown made no mistake of it. Raul Renton was beaten there in the fifth minute, and there was rejoicing. The second half now, the game change in the favor of Jamaica College. Malachi Sterling being the man who was doing the darting run. Brought down by Gooden and the captain. Didn't have the most convincing of kicks, but it went in, and that's all that matters. Had a stone to throw. This one rattled the crossbar after Jaheim Williams got a, a tip to it. That was from the captain as well. And also this one. Again in the midst of all the melee there, Sayers getting the acrobatic attempt off, coming across the, coming against the upright, and Jaheim Williams able to play it out. And that's all she wrote for 90 minutes. Full-time match statistics. St. Andrew Technical, one shot on target from eight attempts. JC had five from 13 attempts. Nine fouls committed by St. Andrew Technical, five by Jamaica College, no yellow cards, no red cards. Two offsides for Stats, one for JC. They had the majority of the corners, of four to Stats, one. Jaheim Williams had to make four saves, and Jamaica College having the majority of the possession, 57%. But it's still level after 90 minutes. The penalty shootout comes up next. Another penalty shootout to separate St. Andrew Technical and Jamaica College. In other instances, it was for the Manning Cup final and for the Champions Cup semi-final last season. The fifth time, they will be separated via the penalty shootout. do we have here 
what do we have on our hands? Jaheim Williams. Part of the return in cost. Dante Logan coming forward for Jamaica College. The first kicker for them on the afternoon. Tension, drama, nerves. Can this be Logan's moment? Can this be Williams' moment? Logan gets it in. Good kick by Logan. Rye smile from Jaheim Williams. He's good in penalties as well, Williams, but he yeah, went a bit early. Not sure he was on the line either. Was there a slight touch as well? I think there was, you know. But enough on it from Logan. Jason Charles came on in the dying moment of this encounter. Yeah, the first of the many substitutes. So let's see. Marvin Taylor also came on late in this contest. Can he convert from 12 yards? Taylor versus Charles. That was a good penalty. Shows the wrong way. Both keepers going the wrong way for the first kicks. Held his composure well did Taylor. Good penalty. Jaheim Williams. Against the captain. Scoring Round two. Time. Round two. This battle. Fares won the first. Can he win again? Yes, he does. Well taken from the Vincentian. This time, Williams, no smile. Games going on, of course. Hesitation. And just froze the keeper. That was an excellent penalty into the far triangle. Even if he had gone the right way, Williams, he wouldn't have saved that. And I guess he did lean the right way, but no chance. Clinical from the skipper. Nicole Gale. You always want to kick first because you can then see what is happening. Whether you miss, you get a chance to then make the save. You get a lead, you put the pressure on the kick on the following kicker. Charles versus Gale. It's a standoff. Like a Western movie. Can Gale fire? He does. That was a good penalty. Gets the monkey off his back. He was a part of the penalty shootout last year in the Manning Cup final. Yeah, did kick did Nicoy Gale, defensive midfielder. But he's been generally good from the spot. On a few occasions, he's been called upon. All square. Dylan John comes forward now. Pretty boots and all. Highlight player for JC this season. Probably their player of the season, Dylan John. Can he bring glory? Cheeky. Oh, wow. Well, if that wasn't confident, I don't know what is. That was a really confident kick from Dylan John. Almost turned his body around, and we've seen players so many times miss from those kind of situations, and then just slotted it. Played the eye game with Jaheim Williams, and he won the battle. They have a swagger about them, Jamaica College. Delaney White. Can he convert? For a but yeah. not so late. Not so late. Yeah. He would have warmed into the game nicely. Right now the breeze would probably feel cold though. 
Jason Charles trying to give the optical illusion that there's much space. Delaney White doesn't fall for it though, has a second go as well. Again, the keeper goes the wrong way. Well, this change hasn't worked for JC so far. Taking out Renton, putting in Charles. Yeah. Went too early, chose the wrong way. Actually, that was Davian Blackburn. The numbers are so close, the three and the eight. And Blackburn was one of those late yeah, substitutes. He, was. he came on with Taylor. Yeah. So, so far, it's paid dividends for Philip Williams. To hear Lawrence. Let's see if he can deliver from 12 yards. Jaheim Williams continues to step as cool as you like, and he walks away. Confident with the left foot, Lawrence stutter step as well, and the hesitation. And well, look at Jaheim Williams. He was he wasn't on the line for sure by the time the kick was taken. So had that missed, it would have been called back. Have to have one foot on the line at least mm. four three is it it is delaney white now did he hear me and will he oblige yes he will good kick from white lots of pace behind it again charles goes the wrong way 4-4. Four, four. Rejoicing for St. Andrew Technical at the moment. They're still in it. Perfect scorecard thus far. Jabari Howell steps forward for Jamaica College. Howell. Oh. Oh, my word. Oh my word! Tension mounts now! The report card has been spoiled! And can St. Andrew Technical be the teachers? Rejected by the crossbar, Chris Taylor. Yeah, the keeper went the wrong way. But he couldn't get it two inches lower. What a moment. Just lifting, leaning back at the rock at the last moment. And you score, you win, St. Andrew Technical. Charles hasn't gone the right way so far, hasn't been able to come up with a save. And it's the captain Livingston who can win it. Their first senior title since 1987. Richard Livingston, can he give the final blow? Livingston is saved! Oh, it's all happening. Jason Charles finally gets one right and what a moment to get it right pain anguish on the face of richard livingston jamaica college lift the fight again and livingston didn't look up at the keeper at all if he did he would have seen that charles went early charles was already leaving leaning to the left hand side and livingston who scored a penalty for stats in the earlier rounds can't convert today in the semi-final, in fact, that penalty that he scored. Wow. The pressure of the moment too much. And JC live again as they have so many times in ba their history. Malachi Sterling now won the penalty. Converts his advantage, Jamaica College. Arguably the best player on the park today, Malachi Sterling. Love how he, he has put his game together, Sterling, and never know any doubt on his face that he was going to convert that. Can Charles make it two in two in terms of the save? It's six five. We're in sudden death. JC with the advantage. Or is it five four actually? But we're in sudden death. Alex Xavier Gooden. Can he keep St. Andrew Technical in it?
Oh, there was venom behind that one. I'm surprised that he kicked so late, Alex Xavier Gooden. He's kicked in all of the penalty shootouts they have had. And he's a solid kicker. Good technique. Look at that. That was a great in-step strike. Straight down the middle. And even if Charles had stood his ground, well, he would have been in problems there. Five all. So now we're, well, we've gotten into the kickers who have not been preferred. Yeah, Ronaldo Barrett came on for penalties, I'm sure. Well, clearly not. Let's see. Again, Williams just needs to hold his groan a little longer, Williams. He's going way too early. Even that penalty that was missed, it's how that missed it, but he went the wrong way as well. He is jumping way too early. Look at this. He is off to the races. Yeah. And yeah, the Jamaica College players just holding their kick and waiting for him. Anyhow, still have to finish it. Ajitai Marshall. Can he deliver? Can he keep them alive? There's been so much drama. Marshall. Hasn't been a bad penalty shootout at all. Yeah. Nice kick from Marshall. Again, Charles going the wrong way, but didn't, didn't actually go early. It was just a really good penalty. Probably was actually leaning the right shoulder, even though he didn't dive. Wrong foot in the keeper, and Marshall did well. Philip Williams, what's on his mind? Has got these knockout competitions right at the senior level with Fort Moore United. But hasn't quite been able to get it done here at the schoolboy level. Jamaica College. Saved! There is yet hope for stats. And the referee not hearing the entreaty. Well, of Zinedine McLean, who thought is the argument that the keeper was off his line. Well, the assistant referee is right there. And he's been sent away, McLean, still pleading. The referee has been called. The fourth official has something to say. I think he's on the line. His foot is on the line. No problems there. I think so. No problems there. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I think the officials are saying that the ball was moving. So it's not a case of the kicker not, of the keeper not being on the line. But if the ball was moving, that's a mistake from Jamaica College. Who yeah. missed the penalty? Yeah. So why is it being kicked over? Kelsey Anderson getting a firm talking to from the stats coaching staff. The ball moving would have been a fault of the kicker who missed. Yeah. So why should why should he it was moving you know it was moving at first let's look here yeah it didn't move it, there yeah it was moving it was moving to be honest but on the spot moving but why well, should it's a fault of the kicker yeah why should St. Andrew technical suffer yeah definitely jaheem williams was on the line his left foot was on the line and the area has been affected no wonder well, the ball well well what do we have here? McLean gets another bite of the cherry. He does well the second time of asking. Jaheim Williams remonstrating. Uh, 
And I think really stats have been hard done by here. I, yeah. I, I, I would need to dig deeper in the rules, but considering that the kicker is the one who places the ball, had the kicker scored, I could agree with them saying, no, this needs to be taken over because the ball was moving. But he missed, and the goalkeeper had done everything right. Why should he pay the price? Kevin Hall, for stats. Blasted over! Disaster for St. Andrew Technical once more! Joy for JC! They're rejoicing! Old Hope Road, filled with hope! And the old story continues for St. Andrew Technical. How do you console them after this? After they were almost sure that they could have won it. How do you bring them? How do you remotivate them? How do you keep them in the game? What a dramatic end. Pain. Bewilderment. It's been a mystery. It has been a mystery. He's enraged. The old familiar story is still there. They're enraged. And I think rightfully so. Shell shock for St. Andrew Technical. And the old story goes the way of Jamaica College once more. They did what they needed to do from the penalty spot. Jamaica College win 7-6 on penalties. It's a Walker Cup 2023. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Here's a replay logan started things off for jamaica college marvin taylor was uh, as good that's where it changed jamari howell smashing the crossbar they thought they had it then did stats but livingston the captain was beaten by jason charles it was a save initially but it was called back by the fourth official The second attempt, he was able to deliver Zinedine McLean. Kevin Hall blasted it over. And the True Blues once more beating St. Andrew Technical from 12 yards. The discussions will continue for quite a while. Philip Williams. was visibly distraught, angry, enraged. Well, we have to have a look again at the laws of the game. And one law does state clearly, the ball must be stationary. Law 14, point one. The ball must be stationary on the penalty mark and the goal post, crossbar and goal net must not be moving. We go now to the MVP of this encounter. Kimani and Janae, they're standing by somewhere with him. Thank you, Dean. I'm joined by head of business marketing at Digicel, Kimberly Campbell. She's presenting the man of the match award to Malachi Sterling of Jamaica College. Malachi, let me have a quick talk with you. You won on penalties 
How good does it feel to be Walker Cup champion? Well, it's a good feeling to be the Walker Cup champion. This is also my last season, so I'm grateful for this title. Well, send a message to your fans at home before you leave. Well, I just want to tell everyone, continue to support Jamaica College. All the best for next year. All right, thank you, Malachi. All the best. Yeah. Yeah, Malachi Sterling there of Jamaica College. I'm joined now by head coach of Jamaica College, Walker Cup champions coach Davian Ferguson. Coach, you did it again via the penalty spot against St. Andrew Technical. One year out, how good does it feel to be champion? Um, I think the incident at the end really marred the game. Um, but kudos to our boys. I think we came out here today. We started a little bit shaky. Um, but I think on the floor of the game, we had the better at the stats team. Um, Commissary to stats, I think they played well. They're always a very good opponent. Um, but I think today we want it a little bit more, and our boys show that. Congratulations, coach. Thank you. Yeah, that's the end of this one. The Walker Cup title goes to Jamaica College, beating St. Andrew Technical 7 6 on penalties. And it's their fourth hold on this trophy, Jamaica College. And yeah, what a moment it was for them. The discussions will continue, though. That's that for the Walker Cup for 2023. The presentation is all that's left. The action on the field has been completed. Through players there having a lively discussion as the lights come on inside the national stadium. As you see, the players there from Mona High warming up ahead of the Manning Cup final. Lots of conversations will continue, I'm telling you. Yeah, the grandstand is uh, feeling festive at the moment. The music there blaring. He would have won the Manning Cup via the penalty shootout. Last is captain, Xavier Davidson. They do know how to get it done, Jamaica College take nothing from them they have the uncanny ability to get it done they don't mind however it was won they're still rejoicing there's still joy mentioned earlier on, named in memory of H.N. Chicken Walker, first general secretary of the Intersecondary School Sports Association and Manning Cup player at Jamaica College.
yeah, warm up for the Manning Cup in full swing as we get ready for the presentation the chairperson of the, Manning Cup of the Walker Cup Dr. trophy. The public uh, address announcer giving the opening the remarks. Rep, Elon Parkinson, head of communications and corporate affairs. So, ladies and gentlemen, the Walker Cup champions 2023, their fourth hold on the title Jamaica College. O'Neill Anchor, Chairperson Manning Cup, and Elon Parkinson, Head of Communications and Corporate Affairs at Digicel, makes the presentation of the Walker Cup. Getting ready Cup. for the presentation of the trophy. Elon Parkinson from Digicel is there. And uh, the Jamaica College team on hand. And they hoist the trophy for the fourth time in their history. Brenton Sayers leads the rejoicing party for Jamaica College. Walker Cup champions for 2023. And the party will continue for them all through the night. Joy, delight, rejoicing. They've done it another time. They have kept their nerves. Custos Rotolorum of Kingston and St. Andrew. Team manager there, Ian Forbes, gets it on the action. The keeper, who was instrumental. Dylan John had his time there as well. And they are rejoicing. Stabell there. Injured, unable to play today, but having the ability to hoist the trophy. A classy moment on that occasion from Jamaica College. DJ Bravo has his sound reverberating across the national stadium. Champion, champion. Champion Jamaica College, the Walker Cup champions for 2023, beating St. Andrew Technical 7 6 on penalties. Yo, Issa. High school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, pick up, manning up. All the way shield, you make we link up. We watch the champions cup, Ben Francis. What a cup, which team are win the championship this season? Yo, it's a one day for school, I got finished the league and beat now. Which you I got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, it's a busy fans are roll out all boat. And I never have it nice up. People love see when boys I get nice up on the field. I'm going to school from far and them love with peaceful and the youths now. Yo, it's a school boy football, no local. The youths are move on to international big league. And I still people are but member which party start. It's a school boy football. Run, come, look one, look all. Which team are the best and like a better than the best and if I hear team beat your chest. It's a school boy football. A team could rise and a team could fall. But the Never will know until the whistle blows around. Come enjoy the show. 